I would say I always had a, a hankering to explore. My wife was a more intrepid camper than, than, than I was. I mean, I thought I was, I was pr pr pretty good at camping, but uh, you know, we did a lot in the, in, in the Canadian bush, but on our, our honeymoon, we actually went to, to, to Morocco. You know, we, we were living in England at the time, and I had a Volkswagen Beetle, and I took out the back seat, and I, I put in a tent that was big enough for me to stand up in, and I, I, and I, I took a couple of, of, of folding chairs, and she just thought I was the softest damn yank. <laughs> because she, she'd been camping basically rough a lot. An explorer from the start. Peter Bradshaw was first exposed to the world of mining while schoolmates with Ramsey Derry, the son of renowned geologist Duncan Derry. I met Duncan a number of times, and uh, you know, I've, I've got to, to credit him with getting me thinking about rocks as opposed to thinking about trees. And I saw it was something that you could work at outside, but it was also a profession where you'd never know everything. I mean, there was just so much to, to, to know, you'll only ever know a fraction of it. So it was, was something that you could really, you know, enjoy for the rest of your life. A passionate learner, Peter attended Ottawa's Carleton University for Geology and went on to obtain his PhD from Durham University in England. Years later, as an advocate for evolving exploration methods, he co-founded the Mineral Deposit Research Unit at the University of British Columbia in 1989. Peter, I think, was critical in those early days in putting forward a model for an industry-university research collaboration that fundamentally was very different from the other ones that, that were in place around the world, and I think that's been one of the key reasons for the MDRU's success. They, they tended to be sort of a separate unit, separate to the department. As far as I'm concerned, MDRU has to be part of the, of the department. What, what you want to do is to, is to be able to get information the professors have and move it in, in, into industry, uh, where industry can really use it and, and benefit from it. He's always looking to, to where the next development is going to be and how to get through to the point of being able to use those, uh, those insights in the search for mineral deposits. You may only want 5% of someone's time because they're working on something so esoteric that you've hardly ever thought about it. But there just might cross a boundary, which otherwise you, you, wouldn't have, you wouldn't have ever done yourself. Crossing boundaries has been a theme in Peter's career. His work has taken him around the world and led to discoveries where others would have given up. It was a poor grid that he faced both challenging terrain and discouraging initial results. Porgra was quite isolated. It's up about eight and a half, half thousand feet. It was a long way from any infrastructure. Uh, there was a an, an airstrip in, in the a strip with a, a ten degree up upslope with a mountain wall at the end. So you know when when you're on final, you were really on final. Peter had done quite a lot of work on the project and. I uh, felt that, uh, that there was indications that somewhere in that project there was a very high-grade core. There really wasn't much enthusiasm to, to do any, any further work. But, you know, what happens when you work on a property, if you have a real fundamental decision, if you think it's a mine, you focus on making that into a mine. So I argued that, you know, we'd focused on this bulk tonnage open pit. There were a number of prospects which we had more or less ignored. So I, f I phoned up our two partners and said, no, no, guys, we're putting up, this, up this, this program because we were managers. You know, are you, are you in, in, in or out? And they said, you know, Bradshaw, are you crazy? Peter's conviction ultimately resulted in the Zone 7 discovery and a drill hole with such high-grade results, he feared they would be misconstrued. I mean, I, I, mean, I thought this is, is super exciting, but it was, was really, really tempered by having to manage it properly. Once we had those results, then, then the financial floodgates opened. 
you know, and you know, everyone said, oh yeah, of course, we, we, we knew that all the time, you know, it wasn't that fantastic. It started in 1990 and uh, has produced over 18 million ounces of gold with several million still in reserve. I think Peter did an exceptional job. One of the other attributes that he's very good at was prioritizing money and trying to put the right amount of money in the right spot because he wasn't going to get very much of it. Peter's resourcefulness under difficult conditions made a positive impression on those who worked with him over the course of his fruitful career. A proponent of sharing success, his commitment to social responsibility has left a lasting legacy. He was exceptionally good in organizing people, inspiring them, and treating people with respect, and, and particularly with this idea of the, the local people that are going to be impacted by a mine, how they should be treated and what could be done for them while the exploration program was going on. It, it really is something very special, and an awful lot of people don't get a chance to do it. I've often thought, gee whiz, Someone's paid me to come out here and look at this. We can li literally go where people virtually never go.